The Spork Monster is here to fight a hero. Hey Miko, my Sanders voice, I'm doing my best Colonel impression. Oh yeah, I think I left the fridge door open. Later nerds! We will not let harm come to another student, except for that ghost kid. I kind of dropped the ball on that. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me, because I'm a monster. See? Is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss any discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. P -p -p what will you do? Uh. Uh. The best form of defense is defense. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? I'll cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Oh shit. It just got real. That attack really upsets Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy. You take one damage. Oh, I'm gonna defend. Okay, this is gonna take a little bit of a while. But, uh, yeah. You continue to stay back and enjoy whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure, you do you. Spork uses the mind mash and draws energy from Mother Earth. Grows large and more intimidating. How will you respond? I'll go on the attack. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, you two need 10 souls, you get 2 damage from the attack. You take 1 damage, you're not going to survive the battle. I don't know what the result is. Yep. Buff. Buff up! No one can control this much buffness. You start to feel bloated, quite frankly. A little gassy. You'd better attack soon, you're likely to explode. You decide to go on the attack. Chow down! Chow down does 2 damage. Powerful blow. Spork Master with cheese, sauce, and the land called quad. Or he's going to have to clean that up. Uh, Villain Bronco prepares for his ultimate attack, Rounded Edge! Vile villain, your reign of terror starts here! Okay, I'm still with the energy of 1,000 chickens. I think they did a simulator about this uh, on the totally oh, uh, battle simulator of some kind. Like 100,000 chickens taken on a T Rex. Pop Pie Pow Pinch! Pop Pie Pow Pinch does 10 damage. Spork Launcher is defeated. You, you saved me. Ninja Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Uh, forget Mercy, finish him. No student will ever walk this quad in fear again. This monster messed with one the wrong ship. Attack! You ready for your final attack? You will never survive my student debt loan destruction. Does ten damage. Spork Monster completely vaporized. Colonel Sander looks in awe. You continue to surprise me, Grax. The defeated, defeated monster leaves behind a special item. It appears to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells of the golden chicken on the cover. Hmm. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have cited out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hand. As you come down from your battle bars, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away without any energy to keep your eyes open. Darkness overtakes you. Darkness imprisoning me. All I see, absolute horror. Ra 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 ra. I forgot the words. So I'm sorry. Just gonna take a little bit. Oh no. Let's drink a little bit of water. Oh, delicious. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you to bed like a creep. Uh, so a, a good gentleman. In your tired states, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have to th uh, strength to utter a single hand job. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly, unable to move and breathe as he takes advantage of... <clears throat> Good night, my colonel. In your dreams, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there. Instructing your love dreams. Instructing your love. Dreams are weird. So many chicken! Buy our chicken! You're awake on day, day two. Day two? 
Oh well, wow. okay, this is gonna be a good one. You wake on day two and attempt to process the weird visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secrets you discovered while tasting sandals. Candle Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe you really used vaginas. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel went ahead and told you outright. But not much of a secret, right? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your besties in front of the school, although I bet she's pissed. Before you can tell about the accounts with the spork marcher, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a bit strange, but uh, I think I might be, um, pregnant. I think I might like Crank! Oh! I imagine that you would say the same thing with Pop. Like him? Like, like, like? I know, it sounds like he's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I, I like him. Like, like him. Like his attachable penis. Detachable penis. Uh, we, we're going to talk after class, and he's actually a totally sweet robot. Not only that, but he's really smart, and his dick is gigantic. He tells me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was like the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he's like so popular that he was voted prom king around uh, at a school he didn't even go to. And he was also the convertible... And he was also the convertible convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. What? And I'm, I'm thinking maybe something got lost in the pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe this it's best if you took it slow with this new boy like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? Well, we definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you? I guess. Laughing at the implications that you and the Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Nah. However, you don't know that you know a second ingredient too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, like I said, a secret ingredient. Is, is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, like when I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in a botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me about this passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper red dried flower petals. And if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So if I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with him, very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyway, we both shared an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about these new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Se Sanders' secrets. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient. So I doubt it'll be much use to anyone. Cod fault. Please, please, please. He would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? Uh, make it up. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know, how about, um, feces? It was I've Newt. Yeah, I know it sounds like some kind of witch potion, but what can you do? I have Newt. Wow. 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 Her eyes light up, imagining such a new thing, and you figured that you satisfied her curiosity, and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you could ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secret to other people, you're interrupted. 
A wind rushes. Cherry blossom fills the air. What? Why? Why is this perfect man riding in a horse? It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. Stand back at Murray. I'm going to run to him like a loser. You decide the best way to show Miriam how serious you and the Colonel are, you will run towards him. Sure, he'll sweep you up with the back of the stallion and you'll run away right away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel! My Colonel! <laughs> However, your sudden movements surprise the horse and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. The force of the bloke completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, you see a vision. Ooh, Grax, I'm here to deliver you a message. Oh, not this guy. It's important you remember exactly as I say. If you forget the world could end, so you know it's serious. I've been trapped in a realm beyond. But a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times, times, times. And that name is... But before he continued, you suddenly awaken. Shit. Oh, well. Oh, jeez. You awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He rouses you back to your life with a satchel of secret spices. Or, or is that his natural season mask? I'm gonna leave for a kiss! Whoa, whoa, whoa! You know him for a day, are you really sure? I guess you must be. You put your arms around Colonel's neck and pull him in for a kiss. But he turns his face and you awkwardly kiss his ear. You can feel him shudder. Too soon! You clearly mistook his compassion for love. Your soul crawls inside of itself and you instantly die of embarrassment. Game o- What? I've embarrassed myself so many times like that, and I haven't died from it. I don't think I'm dead. Hmm. Alright, let's try that again, shall we? All uh, right, ba 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 ba. Oh, so long. Ah, here we go. So, make up a fake ingredient. Ba ba ba. ba. Uh, I'm gonna keep going in this path. <laughs> Compliments craftsmanship. Um, maybe you shouldn't be riding a horse to school, or maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard to say who was in the wrong here. But one thing is for sure, that Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has uh, beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they pressed up into my face. <laughs> That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates a good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you see two rivals, Ash and Van Van, doing something bad. By the way, they're hiding. You know it must be something really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with restricting ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad? You could try. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulders, but he sees you coming. Oh, well there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. <laughs> Why didn't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Uh, let's try that one. You sit near the rivals, but lean your back. But leave your back turned to them. You and hear Van Van muttering something about. That like, sounds like a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. <clears throat> it's, it's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. Uh -huh. Oh, and you're in the Emperor of Cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you know a good meal if it ate you. <laughs> Being the best chef in the world makes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. <laughs> you finally get a look at what they're hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's, it's the book, just like the one you found out in your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book I found last night in the quad. <laughs> Immediately elbows Vanford, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. 
you notice they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop plan pinned to the wall, and the top seeing potato skins at him as he tries to catch him in his mouth. We're playing! <laughs> Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep, beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry, he rolls over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts! You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables of you fools before I set my lunch down on it, so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool. Fool. Good one. Van Van, I like your grumpy and grump, gumpy and cracks. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle step in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is the classroom, not the sports in court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least, not until we turn on the timer. Just then, uh, a huge light blasts in your face, flashing the words "timer ready." That's what I'm talking about. Oh. I stand corrected. The hard way builds solid. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swiped away. Swept away. And that's an original quote by me. In any case, if anyone's wondering, I hope its message left you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I want to feed you myself. You had this chicken and you've made mashed potatoes and gravy one day, and you feel like you're ready to depress him again. It's time to boil down some water with potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Uh, what time would you temperature boiling at? Uh, Fahrenheit. That's wrong! What were you thinking? Get your head in the game. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. How many herbs and spices? Eleven! That's right. You may not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you've heard the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Now you've got some basics to get to craft. What state of mind is the most favor? Uh, trust. That's wrong! Oh no. I'm begging you to get a camera. Uh, it's fine. fine. Uh, yep, yep. Class base is really for you, but actually it's simply stronger and faster than you. You pick up a face if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father never gets to the game. So every day you meant to survive. Enjoy the energy from that place. Now would be a good time to hide energy. So where should it come from? Uh. uh Uh, nope. Game over. Alright, I'm going to have to try that again. Nope, I got that wrong. Alright, next, uh, what were we thinking? Yep, yep, blah, 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 blah. Yep, yep, yep. Nope, uh, bollocks. Alright, that's fair enough. I'll just keep trying again. I'll cut this. <coughs> <laughs> let's keep, let's just finish all these questions. I'll I'll read it. It's not that important. Uh, yep. Your classmates are rooting for you, but actually super stronger, faster. Blah, 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 blah. When we charge, uh, the shoulders are right. Oh, oh shit! I got that wrong. Uh, you try to shout out the noise with your radio focus when you're cooking. Uh, sizzling. That's wrong. Oh no. I believe in you, Grax. <gasps> he's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome. Except he's knows he's watching you, making you totally forget what you're doing. No way you can think about it, it's Colonel Sanders. Uh, okay, uh, wow, okay. What the fuck? I, woof, okay. Uh, to make it sound, but your dog is busy in its stand mix as you do the crowd grasps. Eh, uh, yikes! This is bopped. 
I knew you loved doing more than a... I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilizing the kitchen battle, but something that makes that but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Or you might not have any hands, but Grax does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get by far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. Is immediately shove your hand in the mixer to risk your dough before it's overmixed. Grax, no! But you're not fast enough and your hands get stuck. It's immediately crushed by the fighting, but there's no way you'd be able to use those hands with the rest of the match. Oh, yeah. Kind of oh no! When you off the finest, these ways can turn out much, much more difficult. Oh no! Oh no! It can't be! Hang on, I'm just gonna touch over there. Good. It can't be! I was so close to finishing my dish! Sweetheart, look at your hands. You simply can't go on. Oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a complete dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, no. I wouldn't be compared to the on account of Grax's injury. Woof. You see Sprinkles beginning to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skipped straight to dessert. <laughs> Under this white chocolate dome, you will find a wider range of delights. Take it on a journey of flavour that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Grax to do the honours, but since you're injured, I'm afraid pouring the creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hands. Colonel Sanders pours all hot, white, hot chocolate sauce on the top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find it. Jesus. <laughs> In inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese courgette. On top, a slice of honeycomb, ice cream, two ways, tender nougats, and pearls of blue blue gilet. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate mm. sauce. Mm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, isn't it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> as he places a sauce covered finger into his lips. Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Uh, put yourself in. You reach out of your apron to wipe the sauce off his glistening face. Colonel Sanders recalls and brushes you back. This gold tea isn't a fashion statement. It's also functional. I was saving that flavor for later. Oh no, I got it wrong. Oh, Colonel. All right, let's just skip on ahead. I believe you, Grax. Thank you. Yep, yep, yep. Ba ba ba. Da, 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 da. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Yep, 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 yep. Hmm. <gasps> your rage bursts burns so intensely within your eyes that they literally burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash as they fall off your face, which means people have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fire brow, you run the quad to be alone. Well, that's weird. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ursula are in love and you decided to get married. And he wasn't and he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. 
Look, I know you're hurting right now. Not just from devastating loss, but from that run-in with a mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well then, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome. Successful. Motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked out of the past. And arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life. But I failed as an obscenitrician. I was passionate about justice. But I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock. But I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I didn't... Uh, <clears throat> I didn't know. People see my dedicated rip and tie, my well-kept beard, and assume I've got it all together. Which is true now. But it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. This kind of sound has changed his focus. You can see something at night inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. is honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I, was, I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants, buy a chicken, that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Yeah. <laughs>